Let's talk about the second way to control where a pod gets scheduled, a pod's affinity field. The optional affinity field is a more expressive, more capable alternative to the node selector field. There are three different types of affinity. There's node affinity, pod affinity, and pod anti-affinity. Node affinity dictates that the pod should only be scheduled onto nodes with specific labels. This is basically what the node selector does. For example, only schedule the cache pod on nodes with the label memory equals SSD. Next we have pod affinity. It dictates that the pod should only be scheduled on nodes where other specific pods are already running. For example, only schedule the cache pod on nodes where the web server pod has already been scheduled. This way you can reduce the network latency between the two pods. Finally, there's pod anti-affinity. This is how you require that pod A should not be scheduled on the same node as pod B. For instance, you probably don't want to put two heavily used databases on the same machine. Therefore, you can use pod anti-affinity to make sure that these DB pods repel each other and get scheduled onto separate nodes. Check out this example of a pod config file, which specifies a node affinity requirement. It's a bit more verbose than the previous node selector example, but the two are more or less equivalent. This is a node affinity rule. Node affinity comes in two variants, required during scheduling, ignored during execution, and preferred during scheduling, ignored during execution. Okay, the names of these two fields are ridiculously long, but they spell out exactly what they do. The required during scheduling part means that the pod can only be scheduled on nodes that meet the requirements laid out below at scheduling time. The ignored during execution part means that the pod will not be unscheduled from a node which no longer meets the requirements. The preferred during scheduling, ignored during execution field is very similar. The preferred during scheduling part specifies that the pod prefers to be scheduled on a node which meets the requirements below. However, the pod may be scheduled to a node which does not meet one or more of the requirements. The ignore during execution part is the same as what we saw before. The node selector terms field contains a list of match expressions elements. In this case, there's only one, but if there were multiple, their results would be logically ORed together. The match expressions list is one of your standard label selectors that we learned about way back at the beginning of this course. Each of its elements are logically ANDed together, which means that this pod will only be scheduled onto nodes which have the labels machine type equals high CPU and memory equals SSD. Here's a slight variation on the previous example. The pod uses the preferred blah 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 field, which changes things up a bit. The preferred during scheduling field expresses a list of node affinity preferences. Each element in the array has a weight value between 1 and 100. Kubernetes looks at each node in the cluster and compares it to each of the label requirements in the list. The weight values get added together for each label expression which matches. Kubernetes then tries to schedule the pod onto the node with the highest total weight. Of course, the pod may be scheduled onto a node with none of these labels, because the node affinity is preferred, not required. So here's a simple example of how this works. The pod would prefer to be scheduled on a node which has both label value pairs. But if it can't have that, it would prefer to be scheduled on a node with a machine type equals high CPU label versus a node with a memory equals SSD label because the former weighs more than the latter.